everyone, as you may have noticed from the thumbnail, I have quite a few books to show you today, so let's jump right in. First off, I was sent these two books for review by Corsair. They are publishing Heather Crystal's new book. This is a memoir and it's called The Crying Book. In this, she talks about her friend who she lost to suicide and she talks about depression, the birth of her first child. And the way that this is written, looks like it's going to be quite a lot like Maggie Nelson and I'm 100% here for that. Heather is also a poet and they sent me this, which is The Trees, The Trees. It's a collection that they are, I wouldn't say reissuing, I'm not sure it was actually ever published in the UK, it's just available in the States. And this is one of my favourite poetry collections ever. I made a video recently where I talked about 50 poetry recommendations and this was one of those. And I'll link that video in the description box if you would like to go and find out more. I went to Lighthouse Books in Edinburgh, I'd never been there before, it's fantastic. I bought this, which I had seen crop up on quite a few booktube videos. So this is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi and it's translated from the Japanese by Jeffrey Trosselot. So this is a novel with three connected stories within it. It's set in a cafe in Japan where you can time travel, but there are strict rules. You can only time travel to another time when you were in that cafe. You can only time travel to that specific time and talk to whoever was with you at that time. You can't change the present, so you can only go and re-experience things. Equip yourself with knowledge that you can change the future going forward, but it won't alter the time loop I suppose and you have to get back to the present before your coffee gets cold. I think the premise sounds really wonderful. I've already started reading this and I'll talk about it more when I'm finished. I also picked up this which I had never heard of before. It's called Cycle Saga by Vicky Husband and it says um, Cycle Saga is a long poem about a bicycle trip through the Arctic Circle in northern Norway. It is a journey through landscape, which is making me smile reading this, Norse mythology and the Norwegian language, exploring what draws us to a place of distance and proximity in time and space and of connections. I mean, it just sounds like it's ticking all of my boxes. Then I was sent this book for review, which I think sounds fascinating. It's by Patricia Farah and it's called A Lab of One's Own. And this is all about, let me read the blurb, it says, A Lab of One's Own reveals the untold lives of female scientists, doctors and engineers who undertook endeavors normally reserved for men during the First World War. It tells extraordinary stories of female initiative, determination and isolation in a period defined by war, prejudice and disease. Yes, thank you. And also non-fiction November's coming up, so I might pick it up then. I also have a few other non-fiction books in this haul to talk about. Next, I was sent this book for review. It was unsolicited, but it does sound right up my street, so I'm gonna keep it. This is Escape Roots, Step Into a World Less Ordinary by Naomi Ishiguro. This is Kaju Ishiguro's daughter. This is her debut short story collection. And it says that it is an Alice in Wonderland book for our times. A space obsessed child conjures a vortex in his mother's linen cupboard. A musician's fascination with the birds who flock to her balcony offers a startling new perspective in the city. A rat catcher summoned to a decaying royal palace is plunged into a battle for the throne of a ruined kingdom. And two newlyweds find themselves inhibited by the arrival in their lives of an outsized, watchful, stuffed bear. So yes, I am intrigued by this one. When I was on book tour, I was gifted these two books. So this one is The Forgotten and the Fantastical number four. It's Modern Fables. And it was gifted to me by a woman called Victoria who has a story in here. So this is um, fairy tale, fable inspired stories right up my street. All of these books will be linked that's the doorbell, two seconds. Sorry about that. Okay, also on book tour, I was gifted this by Jan who runs the English bookshop in Uppsala and he said this sounded right up my street and that I had to take it home with me. So it's called Goblin by Eva Dundas and it's about a child called Goblin who's running feral in World War II London. She witnesses the carnage of the Blitz. She sees things that she can never be unseen but can be suppressed. She finds comfort in her beloved animal companions and lives on her wits, exploring a fantastical world of lizard kings and Martians and joining the circus. So I'm not, I, I, I can't really imagine what kind of book this is from that description, but it definitely sounds very intriguing. 
Canongate very kindly sent me a copy of Molly Aiken's debut novel. This is called The Island Child and it's coming out in January. As the title would suggest, this is about an island. It says, an island is a gift for some, a prison for others. So it's about a mother and a daughter, about the importance of storytelling and about Irish folklore. Lauren and Jean gave me a copy of this. They went along to a press evening that Viking were doing and this was one of the books that they were giving to reviewers and um, because they know that I love lullaby, they picked this up for me because it sounded not similar, but in that kind of similar vein of literary thriller, not similar in plot. And also it's got a quote on the back from Jeanette Winterson, which is quite strange for a crime slash thriller. So I'm really, really intrigued. So this is called Keeper by Jessica Moore. A woman who works at a woman's refuge is found dead in the river. The police think that it's death by suicide, but the people who work at the refuge don't think so. They think it's murder. And Jeanette Winterson says, this is a, a, a blah, blah, blah a new young writer who I believe in. So there we go. I also have this book here, which was sent to me by Vintage. I don't know if you've heard of it. No one seems to be reading it. This, <laughs> this is The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. The sequel to The Handmaid's Tale. I will be reading this in the next month, probably, and talking about it. Um, I also bought three other non-fiction books. The first two are The Fault of Rosianna and I'll link her channel down below. She made a video where she was talking about books she'd read recently and really enjoyed. So this one is The Uninhabitable Earth, A Story of Our Future by David Wallace Wells. This is all about climate change and I wanted a non-fiction book about climate change so I picked that one up. I also bought this which is pretty big. It's called The Age of Surveillance Capitalism, The Fight for a Human Future at the New Frontier of Power by Shoshana Zuboff and this is about our data and um, websites who take our data and how that has all been normalized. Having watched um, the documentary, which I have now forgotten the name of, but about Cambridge Analytica, what is that documentary called? I don't remember. Anyway, having watched that, um, I wanted to kind of find out more about algorithms and data usage. This is also, I think, about Instagram and the way that people use the internet and how companies latch onto that. I think it'd be really, really interesting. So I'm hoping to get to this one in the not too distant future. I also bought this, which is Unfollow by Megan Phelps Roper. She was part of the Westboro Baptist Church. She was born into that family and she has now left. So this is her memoir and people are um, comparing it to Tara Westover's Educated. So I'm very much looking forward to getting to this. I went to Brighton this week with Jean and went into a few secondhand bookshops and I picked up this, which is What to Do When Someone Dies by Nikki French. If you watched my latest video, my September wrap up, you'll know I've been inhaling Nikki French novels. So whenever I find one, I add it to the bookshelf. So I picked that up. And finally, finally, I bought the second book of dust. This is The Secret Commonwealth by Philip Pullman. It came out last week. My heart is not ready, but it is also so ready because we've been waiting so long. The first book of dust was set before his dark materials. This one is set afterwards. So Lyra's 20 and I just, I the thought of it makes me wanna cry. So I really hope it lives up to all of the hype and all of the love I already have for it inside my heart, which sounds very corny, but I'm sure most of you are aware. His dark materials are my favorite books of all time, so. No pressure at all. <laughs> Those are all the books I wanted to talk to you about. Have you read any of them? Would you like to? Let me know in a comment down below. As I said, I'll link all of them in the description box too. I hope you're all having a great week and I'll speak to you very soon. Lots of books love. Bye.